Confounding Human Expectations. Our scripture reading today comes to us from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 18, verses 9 through 34. He also told this parable to some who trusted in themselves that they were righteous and regarded others with contempt. Two men went up to the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee, standing by himself, was praying thus, God, I thank you that I am not like other people, thieves, rogues, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week. I give a tenth of all my income. But the tax collector, standing far off, would not even look up to heaven, but was beating his breast and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his home justified rather than the other. For all who exalt themselves will be humbled, but all who humble themselves will be exalted. People were bringing even infants to him that he might touch them. And when the disciples saw it, they sternly ordered them not to do it. But Jesus called for them and said, Let the little children come to me, and do not stop them, for it is to such as these that the kingdom of God belongs. Truly I tell you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will never enter it. A certain ruler asked him, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good but God alone. You know the commandments. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not murder. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. Honor your mother and father. He replied, I have kept all these since my youth. When Jesus heard this, he said to him, There is still one thing lacking. Sell all that you own and distribute the money to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. But when he heard this, he became sad, for he was very rich. Jesus looked at him and said, How hard it is for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God. Indeed, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. Those who heard it said, Then who can be saved? He replied, What is impossible for mortals is possible for God. Then Peter said, Look, we have left our homes and followed you. And he said to them, I Truly I tell you, there is no one who has left house or wife or brothers or parents or children for the sake of the kingdom of God, who will not get back very much more in this age and in the age to come eternal life. Then he took the twelve aside and said to them, See, we are going up to Jerusalem, and everything that is written about the Son of Man by the prophets will be accomplished, for he will be handed over to the Gentiles, and he will be mocked and insulted and spat upon. After they have flogged him, they will kill him and on the third day he will rise again. But they understood nothing about all these things. In fact, what he said was hidden from them, and they did not grasp what was said. We are going up to Jerusalem, Jesus says in verse 31, and we are nearly there. His culture did not buy value either tax collectors or young children. Yet Jesus said that these nobodies were more apt to receive God's favor than the arrogant Pharisee or the ruler who loved his wealth more than God. Then who could be saved is what his startled hearers asked. Anyone, Jesus implied. What is impossible for humans is possible for God. In Luke, we're told it was a young ruler. In Mark, it's a man. In Matthew, it's a rich man. But this young ruler, whose riches actually possessed him, turned away. Jesus said it was very hard for the wealthy to enter God's kingdom. And yet, back then, as well as today, God's favor was generally associated with God giving wealth. If you were wealthy, then God is blessing you. So that's why they certainly ask, who can be saved? What do we place our trust in, whether it's a somebody or a nobody or a something or a nothing, but our salvation is possible with God? How would this shape the way you live life today? We see in the closing part of this scripture that the disciples still do not get what's really going on when Jesus talked about death and rising. Yet there were other moments when meeting Jesus seemed to reorientate a person's values 
or thinking quickly and radically. Has God ever changed any part of your life quickly or dramatically? In what areas are you still patiently struggling to grow, even with God's help? Let us pray. Lord Jesus, preserve me from trusting in my own righteousness or in my bank or retirement accounts. Be the center and source of my life now and forever. Amen. Blessings to you and yours this day and always. Goodbye.